Hi, this is Father Engel, your pastor, and I'm, I'm back here. Uh, today I'd like to speak uh, about uh, the missionary activity of the church. You all know that we are all baptized, and as baptized people, we are sent. Precisely the word mission is from the word mitere, to send. So we are all sent into the world. And therefore, by, by her very nature, the church is missionary. In fact, we say that the church does not only have a mission, but the church is in mission. It is because every member of the church, by virtue of the baptism, is sent into the world to become the light of the world, the salt of the earth, to be the face of Jesus. Now, there is a uh, decree uh, entitled Agentes Divinitus, or what we call to the nations. No? In fact, this is a, one of the uh, conciliar documents uh, that we have here at Vatican II. And I'd like to repeat what this decree says. It says in, the, in number one, divinely sent to the nations of the world to be unto them a universal sacrament of salvation. The church, driven by the inner necessity of her own Catholicity, and obeying the mandate of the founder, Jesus Christ, as you find in Mark chapter 16, verse 16, the church strives ever to proclaim the gospel to all people. So that's the uh, opening of this uh, decree, Ad Gentes, you see. In number six, it says that missions is the term usually given to those particular undertakings by which the heralds of the gospel sent out by the church and going forth into the whole world carry out the task of preaching the gospel and planting the church among peoples or groups who do not yet believe in Christ. And so in that same decree it says that the proper purpose of missionary activity is evangelization and the planting of the church among those peoples and groups where it has not yet taken root. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, Vatican II is so clear about this, about our mission, our nature as a church. Again, I, I like to repeat, it says there that the church is missionary in nature, and all of us are called to be missionaries or a part of our function is to be missionaries. And still uh, going farther to the decree ad gentes, it says in number seven that the missionary activity derives its reason from the will of God. Where it says in, uh, in the letter of uh, Paul to Timothy in chapter two, verse 45, where it says, God wishes all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, himself a man, Jesus Christ, who gave himself as a ransom for all. And in the Acts of the Apostles in chapter 4 verse 12 where it says, Neither is there salvation in any other. And there it goes farther saying that, Therefore all must be converted to Jesus made known by the church preaching, and all must be incorporated into Jesus by baptism and into the church which is his body. For Christ himself, as you find in the Gospel of Mark, himself said that by stressing in express language the necessity of faith and baptism. You find that too in John chapter 3 verse 5. At the same time, this one at the same, at the same time confirmed the necessity of the church into which all people enter by baptism as by a door. So here again, the church is missionary, welcoming people, bringing Christ to the people and welcoming people to become part of this church and that by virtue of baptism, we are sent into the missions. Brothers and sisters in Christ, this week we have a, a mission appeal 
from the Diocese of Martandon in India. You see, as we have mentioned, uh, we are all missionaries. Though we cannot go to India and do missions, at least even if we are here in the confines of our parish or, or our homes, we can still extend our helping hand for the mission and for the missionaries working for the church. For example, in the Diocese of Martindom in India, the population there is about, the total population is 20,669,924. And out of that population, there are about 65,000 Catholics. So it's about 3%, 3.1% of the entire population. And in that particular diocese, they have um, 82 parishes and substations. They've got also two hospitals, and they have about 420 dispensaries, clinics, and health centers. They have four orphanages, and they have two homes for aged and the destitute, and they have two high schools. And there is diocese in India, are attending to all of this, but uh, unfortunately they can't go on with their missionary activities without the resources coming from themselves and from the world. And for that reason, they're asking our parish if we could help them in some way. I know that during this pandemic, we tend to think of what we need because all of us are suffering due to this pandemic and yet there's nothing or rather, nothing so little for any help that we can give to the mission. After all, you know, that they are part of us as we are part of them too. We are all, we all come from one baptism. We have one same Lord Jesus. And we have one concern, one main concern, to bring Christ to all peoples. And the diocese of martyrdom in India they're bringing the face of Christ to the destitute, to the poor, to the aged, to the children, to the young people, and to everyone. So that, as this decree tells us, into the world we are sent, and thereby being sent into the world makes the whole thing about mission be fulfilled in us and through us, through the power of the Holy Spirit. So I ask you, brothers and sisters in Christ, think about this. Again, I say, you are a missionary. Your help to this diocese will be a fulfillment of your mission function. Thank you so much, and God bless you.